How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Everybody say, God is good. Say, His mercy endures forever. Amen. How many are ready to get a word from God today? How many believe God could speak to you as if you're the only person in this room? Amen. And how many believe that the Holy Spirit inside of you, the Holy Spirit inside of me, He's the teacher and He leads us and guides us into all truth. The Bible says, truth sets us free. The word says in the book of Psalms, he directs his word and delivers us. He directs his word and heals us. How many need a directed word today? We need to be like Samuel when he laid before the Lord. He was running back and forth. And, and then finally Eli said, lay down. And next time God speaks, say, Lord, speak. I'm listening. How many are ready to listen to what not Pastor Michael says, but what the Holy Spirit wants to say? And, and how many are ready to just make any change, right? It, it's not just the hearer of the word. It's the doer of the word. Right? If you're just hearing it and not applying it, it'll do you no good. Amen. But we're not those hearers. We're doers of the word. Amen. Amen. And we're the people when the storms come and they come to all of us, the rains come, the winds come, our house will stand. Why? Because it's built on the rock and we are doers. Everybody say doers, doers. Of, the of the word. Father, I just thank you for utterance this morning. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence here today, Lord. We are so excited, Father, that you are ministering to these precious people, ministering to me. You said they that water get watered themselves. So, Lord, I'm expecting today that you'll minister to me in a higher level as well as also. So, Father, today's our day. This is the day that you've made. We choose to rejoice. And, Lord, we thank you, Father, for a word in season, a now word. And, Father, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Everybody say persistent praise. Persistent praise. <laughs> I thought we would be done. We've been talking, if you weren't here, over the past, oh my goodness, it's been about two or three weeks, even on Wednesday, I've been talking about the subject of praising God, having a merry heart. So I'd encourage you to go back because I've shared quite a bit. As a matter of fact, Wednesday, I was almost, I was sitting there and I'm thinking, I got to be done with this message, you know. And I, I got it. As soon as I got done, the Lord said, nope, there's some meat left on the bones. And how many want to get it all? I'm a soup to nuts, dessert kind of guy. I want it all. I want the appetizer. I want the main meal. And I want a dessert. We're going to get everything out of this message in Jesus' name. And one of the things the Lord showed me here, because uh, we've been talking about the power of praise. Jehoshaphat, as he praised God, God began to do things. We talked about Paul and Silas when they were in prison, as they began to sing, as they began to praise God. And suddenly, unaware, unexpectedly, God began to move. How many are excited about that? When you and I praise God, and we worship God, and we focus on God, as we're going to see, praise focuses not on the problem, but it focuses on the answer, focuses on the Lord, and we praise Him. And when we do that, powerful things happen. Yes. And the devil knows that. He knows that a merry heart doth good. He knows that if he can get us to be sad and depressed, that there'll be weakness. Because the word says, the joy of the Lord's our strength. Yes. Everybody say, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Nehemiah told him, said, don't you be sorry. Don't you mourn. Why? The joy of the Lord is a safe place. And so what we're going to see today, it's not just starting out in praise. We should be rejoicing and praising God all the way through. Amen. And we have to resist and shake off sorrow, fear, mourning, sadness, distractions. And we keep our focus. And as we praise God, we're going to praise him all the way through. Till, till the outward manifestation of your healing comes. Yes. You know, you are already healed, right. but how many believe you just got to keep on praising, thanking God until the outward manifestations are, yes. right? Yes. Your prosperity, man, whatever you're believing God for, we praise him, glory to God. Yes. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Look what it says in the Word of God over in Exodus, the 17th chapter. We're going to begin reading with verse number 8. Verse number 8. This is the children of Israel. They just got delivered out of Egypt with a powerful, mighty hand of God. I mean, they were over there. They were slaves for hundreds of years. They didn't own themselves. But how many know God sent a man with a mission, with the power of God, and through 10 plagues, God delivered them out of Egypt. God parted the Red Sea. You know, you would think that the devil would quit. He would just sit back and say, well, you know, there's no use of trying. God's on their side. We won't mess with them. But how many know the devil is persistent? The devil is a sly old fox. The Bible says he goes as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan can't just touch anybody. He's looking for the person that he can devour. 
And so the children of Israel, here they are out in the wilderness. They're following the direction of God. There was a fire by night, a cloud by day. And as they're in the perfect center of God's will, all of a sudden the word of God says, Amalek fought with Israel and Rephidim. Notice what it goes on to say, verse number nine. And it says, Moses said to Joshua, choose out men and go out and by saying fight. fight. Now get the picture here. They're, they're, they're going on their merry journey. They're going to the promised land. And all of a sudden Amalek comes. Matter of fact, this was such an evil way that they attacked them. God said to them that he was going to wipe out the Amalekites forever. And that's what he wanted Saul to do later on in Samuel. And so what they did, how the Amalekites attacked him, they attacked him from the rear and they attacked the weak ones and the ones that were behind, the stragglers, those that were there. And it says, they, they came and they came against Israel. How many know it's important to stay with the pack? There's a reason why God puts you in a body. It's, there's a reason why you should have your own company of believers. There's something powerful when two or three gather together. There's something powerful when you're a sheep under a shepherd in a shepherd fold. There's something powerful about that because the Bible says we watch out for your souls. Amen. And we must give an account unto the Lord in that day. And so it says they came out against Israel and Joshua said, Moses said to Joshua, go out and fight. How I many know when the enemy comes breathing and the storm starts raging, it's not time to cower. It's time to resist and stand your ground and go out and fight. Glory to God. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, might, and dominion. Many times when the storms are coming, the problems are coming, we're wilting like a flower and we're wanting God to do something, but God's waiting for you to do something. Yes. Yes. He's given you authority. He's given you power. He's given you the name of Jesus. He's given you the power of the blood. He's given you the word and you must resist the devil and he will flee from God. No, he'll flee from you. How many want the devil to flee from you? So God, uh, Moses said to Joshua, here comes the Amalekites. He said, hey, go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. And he said, I'll stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. The rod of God signified the authority of God, the power of God, the word of God, right? He said, I'm going to stand on the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Look at verse number 10. I mean, love the word. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and he fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Everybody say, the top of the hill. Amen. Look at verse number 11. And he, goes, and he goes, listen to these words. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand. It says that Israel prevailed. Hallelujah. But it says when he let down his hand, what does it say? Amalek, Amalek prevailed. This is, the, this is the thing that happens. When you and I are believing God for something, we're standing and we're waiting for the manifestation to manifest in the natural. It, when you and I are praising God, there, those angels, things are moving, powerful things are happening. Yes. You're moving forward. You're in, it's, it's, it's beginning to be. It's starting to come. It's, it's going to manifest over here. And things are happening positively in the spirit. But when you and I let our hands down, when you and I focus on the negative, when you and I begin to murmur and complain, when you and I give up and let your hands down, the Bible says there's an opposite movement. Amalek is starting to prevail. And that's why it's so important for you and I to have, as we're going to see, this is not just one story, we're going to see from another one, is that you need to have sustained praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's not a feeling, glory to God. You need to wake up and go, glory to God, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. How many know praise is a choice? He said that we are to bring the sacrifice of praise to God continually, which is the, the, the uh, thanksgiving out of our lips continually. We should be saying, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fellowshipping with our King and our great God, yes. praising him despite what you see, despite what you feel, but despite what thoughts are coming to your mind, we need to be praising him in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your battle. Why? Because something powerful is happening behind the scenes. Yes. And it says it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, we see the battles ebbing the other way. He's got his hands up. Joshua's winning. There's movement. You're moving forward. 
You're going forward. But when his hands were down, Amalek was beginning to prevail. Look at verse number 12. How many love the word of the Lord? But he says, but Moses' hands were what? Heavy. Heavy. See, they're watching this now. And it says, and they, Aaron and Hur, they put a stone under him that he sat on him. Get the picture now. You got to see it. Moses has got his hands up. He's holding up the word. How many know you need some faith buddies? You need people to stand with you. God said it's, it's not good for man to be alone. He, and so while the hands were up, they, 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 Joshua, uh, uh, her and Aaron were looking and they're looking down at the battle and they're saying, Joshua's winning. But when the, his hands were heavy, have you ever felt like your hands were a little bit heavy? That's why the enemy tries so hard to, to get you and I to isolate ourselves. To be offended or whatever. How many? We need each other. We are members of the body of Christ. And we're members in particular. We need each other. We draw strength from each other. And so what they saw was his hands were heavy when it went down. They saw the battle was going the other way. The hands were up. And so they put a stone under Moses. And they stood one on one side and one on the other side and held up his hands. And they held his hands steady. Everybody say steady. steady. Everybody say steady. steady. This is what we need. Steady praise. Yes. Steady flow of praise. Yes. It's not a Sunday morning thing, a Wednesday night thing, a, a little glibby thing. It's, we need to be living, rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Yes. If you get that revelation in your spirit, you'll start praising him and worshiping him and thanking him. Why? Because things are happening. Yes. Are guys hearing me this morning? I know you're hearing me. And some of you are like, boy, this guy's really a shouter, man. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited. Yes. yes, I am. I'm excited because I see the principle here. And he says, they held his hand steady unto the going down of the sun. That's why you need people around you. That's why you need somebody to be in your corner that could just say, hey, keep it up, brother. Keep on praying. Why? God is faithful. Glory to God. God is faithful. What you see naturally is changing. Even as we speak, God's moving. The power of God is manifest. Hold your hand up. <laughs> See, they held his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Look at verse number 12, 13. Whew. And it said, Joshua discomfited Amalek and it said, and his people with the edge of the sword. Look at that scripture. I want you to see it in the Amplified. How many love the word? Amen. How many love the word? Amen. How many praisers in the house? Yes. How many full-time praisers in the house? Yes. <laughs> uh, how many full-time praisers? Yes. No, we, we can't be part-time praisers. Right. Right. Hallelujah. We're full-time praisers. Yes. Full-time. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I got an amen out of Terry this morning. Glory to God. <laughs> Notice what it said. He said, as they were, his hands were up, and as they were praising God, it said, Joshua mowed down and disabled Amalek and his people with the sword. How many want to see some of your situations get mowed down? How many want to see some of your situations get disabled? I mean, God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. How? According to the power, right? That's working. Power of praise, man. There's something powerful about when you and I are praise him, praise him, glory to God. Now you hear me, church family. Look at that in the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a result, Joshua and his troops were able to crush to crush. How many want to see some of your situations get crushed? Yes. Yes. Crush the army of Amalek. Yes. Look at that. I want you to see a, a, a slide here. Slide uh, 39. Hallelujah. 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 How many are getting stirred up? Yes. I mean, if the Lord's showing you right now and you're like, well, you know what? I, I kind of let my hands down. Don't get mad at me. Right? Don't get mad at me. If you're like, boy, that preacher's talking to me. I'm, oh, Pastor Michael, I do. No, no, no. Don't get mad at me. If God's encouraging you, I don't know about you. I'm ready. Lord, speak to me, Lord. Help me, Lord God. Right? If I need to make an adjustment, I'm wide open, Lord God. I'm ready to make an adjustment. I'm not the great I am. He's the great I am. Right? Look what it says here in the Darby translation. It says, and Joshua broke the power of Amalek. I like that. The Good News Translation said, in this way, in this way, what way? 
Moses' hands held up high. Joshua what? Totally. They said the last one says, and Joshua drove away Amalek. How many want to see some of your, your things get drove away? Yes. All right, let's look at another example of this, guys, real quick. Let's go to Romans, the fourth chapter. How many love the word? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Grumble and stumble, praise and raise. Amen. Right? You're wondering why you're, you're stumbling, you're grumbling. Right? If you're praising, you're raising, glory to God. Yes. There's just something about being happy and rejoicing in the Lord. Even when you don't understand it, even when you can't feel it, even when it doesn't make any sense to you, we rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. Why? Because we win, glory to God. We're not trying to get the victory. We already won. Yes. We're not trying to get God to do something. He's already, we already got the victory. Right. Right. We're rejoicing preemptively because we've already won. Yes. Are you hearing me, church family? Yes. Now notice the scripture. Uh, dear Cassie, put it to verse 16, my dear sister. How many love the word? Yes. Hallelujah. He said, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of faith, of the faith of Abraham, which is the father of us all. Look at verse 17. It says, as it is written. Notice what God said to Abraham. He said, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now get the picture. Abraham was 75 years old. He had no children. His wife had no children. And when God spoke over to him, he said, I've made you a father of many nations. And we're going to see in a moment some of these words. That's how God speaks. God doesn't speak where you are right now, he speaks what he's already done for you, the reality of the fact of the scripture, of the word. He said, he, he, he said, before him who believe, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not. As though they were. How many like that? That's how God talks. He, 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 he speaks to us as if it's already done because in his eyes it's already done. He calls things that are not as though they were. But it says this. He said, before him whom believe even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Look at verse 18. And it says, and it says, and who Abraham, who against hope, who against natural hope, believed what? In the hope that God's word produces. Hallelujah. What? He believed that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. Notice the word for belief. He said, who against hope. Actually, Cassie, uh, no, we'll do this. Okay, uh, look, do the word believe. Uh, uh, slide 40, dear sister. How many love the word? Amen. He said, here's what Abraham did. He just believed God's word. And the word believe means to, there's the Greek word, it means to be true, to think to be true, to be persuaded of, have confidence in. So that's what he did. God spoke to him and he said, I believe this. I think this to be true. How many have ever had that encounter with God? You hear something in the word, you see it, and you go, I think that to be true. That's faith. I'm persuaded of this thing. He believed what? He believed, even though in the deadness of his, his condition, his wife's condition, he believed that God gave him a word that he would be the father of a nation, multitudes. He said, go back to the scripture, dear sister. He says, who against hope, natural hope, because the natural hope was there is no hope. You go to the doctor, the doctor says, there's nothing we can do for you. There's no cure. You look at your finances and, and all of a sudden there's there no natural hope. There's nothing that could be done. In your mind, you're trying to figure it out. There's no hope, Pastor Michael, there's no hope. But there's a hope that gets generated from God's word. Hallelujah. Who against natural hope, he believed in the hope that comes from God's word. He believed in the promise of God that, yes, even though right now I'm barren, my wife's barren, we have no children, I believe the word says I will be the father of a multitude. Yes. And it says this, who against hope believed in hope. Notice the word for hope. I want you to see it. The word hope, slide 41. It means when you have God's hope in you, hope is a joyful, happy, and confident yes. expectation. It's a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. When you got God's word in you and you got the hope, 
There is a joyful, happy expectation. You're confident, glory to God, that even though this is happening now, this is going to change. And the Bible says faith gives substance to things hoped for. Hope is there in the future, but by faith you reach over and say, I receive the hope of God's word, and you abound in that hope. And you go, yes, I receive it. Doesn't make any sense to me, but the word says, by his stripes I'm healed, therefore I believe it. That gives us a hope. Gives us a hope. Are you hearing me, church family? So against, against natural hope, he, he believed in the hope from God's word. He got a revelation. He said, hey, wait a minute here. God says, I'm going to be productive and I'm going to be fruitful. Look at the word. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. I mean, love the word. He said, who against hope believed in hope that he might, he might become the father of many nations. Abraham had a part to play in order for the word to manifest in his life. Some people say, well, if God wants it done, why don't God just do it? We see that word might right there. He had to believe in the word. He had to receive the promise so that he might become the father of many nations. The word might means you might become or you might not become. But because he chose to believe in God's word and the hope that comes from the word, he said that he might become the father. Some people say, well, Pastor Michael, well, if God just wants to heal me, why doesn't he heal it? Heal me. Well, the, the, there's a principle. The word says that he's not willing that anybody should perish, but he's long suffering that all come to salvation. Not everybody's saved. What do they got to do? Even though it's God's will for you and I to be saved, everybody to be saved, each and every person has to receive it for themselves. <laughs> Are you hearing me, church family? The promises of God, you have to lay hold to them and claim it and put your foot on it and say, this is mine, glory to God. Even though it's universal, by his stripes you were healed, you need to become the you that is becoming healed, that gets healed. You have to accept it for yourself. The Bible says that Jesus became poor so that you and I can become rich. Well, I, I, I don't understand that in my head, but I just believe it. I'm rich. God says I'm rich. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the hope of the world says. I don't care what the economy says. I'm rich. I'm prosperous. Why? Because God's word says it. Are you hearing me, church family? He said, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now look at verse number 19. How many love the word? This is where, this is, now there's a faith walk. When you get a hold of God's word and God gives you a word, this is where the fight of faith begins. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. The good fight means we ultimately win, but we still have a fight. And what the enemy is going to try to do to you and me is to get us to focus not on God's word, but to focus on ourselves or to focus on the problem. And so this is telling us a secret here, what Abraham did. It says Abraham wasn't weak in faith. He was not weak in faith. What did he not do? He didn't consider his own body when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Notice these words. I want you to see it. He said he wasn't weak in faith. He wasn't weak in faith. Notice the word for weak. I want you to see it. Uh, slide number 43. How many love the word? So the word was, was not weak. There's the Greek word. It says he wasn't. He never, never, he didn't waver. This is basically what it's saying. He wasn't weak. The word weak means to be without strength, powerless, or needy, or poor. He said he wasn't weak in faith. He was, and we're going to see it in a moment. He said he wasn't weak. He, 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 he held, he was, he was, there was, there's a steadfast faith that you and I have to get a hold of. And praise is a big part of it. It's a big part of it. It's not just getting in faith. It's staying in faith. Are you hearing me, church family? He said he was not weak. He was without, not without power. He was not powerless. Go back to the scripture cast. He said, not being weak in faith, he considered not. He considered not his own body. Notice the word for consider and not. The word not is the same word. Slide number 44. The word consider means to be attentively, right? To fix your eyes or mind upon. So what was he doing? He wasn't focusing himself on his body. He wasn't focusing himself on the problem or the situation. He, he chose not to observe it, to notice it, perceive it, register it as being significant. And this is where a lot of us, we miss it. All of a sudden we, we get in faith 
And all of a sudden, what the devil tries to do is grab your nose, grab my nose, and start to focus not on the promise of God, not on the word of God. He tries to get us to focus on the problem. And when you and I start to focus on the problem, that causes us to be weak in faith. When you start to notice and you start to fix your mind on it. Can you see it? This is exactly what the devil tries to do. He wants you to get your eyes off the word, off the promise that you're laying hold to and start focusing on the problem. And if you'll do that, it'll cause you to be weak. So go back to the scripture, Kess. He said he was not weak in faith. Are you hearing that we need to have sustained faith? Yes. Somebody say, well, this is just, you know, Pastor Michael, you're just making it hard. No, this is, this is faith walk for the family. Why can't it be easier? It is, as we're going to see in a moment, if you're a praiser. Right. He said, being not weak in faith, he considered not his body. He didn't focus on his body. He didn't focus on Sarah's body. He didn't focus on the deadness of her womb. Do you think he had thoughts to deal with? Do you think that the images were coming to his mind? Do you think when he woke up in the morning, the devil would say, ah, you can't produce any kids. It'll never happen to you. It'll never happen for Sarah. He tries, he's, he's not, he isn't changed. This is what the devil will do. You get in faith. He'll just start throwing thoughts at you, trying to get your eyes, my eyes off the word, off the promise and start focusing on the situation. He said, being not weak in faith, he didn't consider his own, his own body. That's hard. That's a reality. I mean, I mean, I mean let, let's just be honest here. I mean, I know I'm preaching something, rah, rah, let's be faith. But the uh, reality is, it, it takes an act of your will to do this. Because yeah. there's going to be times you're going to go, how can I not consider my body? My body's in incredible pain. How can I not consider my body? I'm weak here. How can I not consider my finances when I look at my checkbook and I don't seem to have any money? How can I, how can I, how can I, how can I, how can I? Listen, that's when you and I have to, we're going to see it. Praise helps us focus on the answer instead of on the problem. You guys are getting it this morning? You guys getting it? You're getting it, right? Yes. Look at verse number 20. Actually, Cassie, can I do... I'm sorry, guys. Go back to verse 18. Can I, I have some great translations here I want to share with you before I go to the next... Go to verse 20. It says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now, I just want you to see this, because remember, we're talking about who against hope believed in hope. Look at slide 45, guys. I want you to just see it. How many love the word? Isn't it great? Amen. Slide 45 says, When it was beyond hope, he had faith in the hope that he would become the father. When it was, you ever been to say, it's like beyond hope. God's word translation says, When there is nothing left to hope for. This is a bad situation. Yeah. This is, look at that in the message Bible, my dear friend. He says, when there's beyond hope, there's, there's no hope. The message says it like this. He says, when everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. Yes. Amen. You're like, well, that's crazy. No, that's faith. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense, Pastor Michael. It doesn't make any sense. We walk by faith, Amen. not by sight. He said, when everything was hopeless, Abraham, what did he do? I'm just going to believe anyway, glory to God. Some of you should just be saying that right now. I'm believing anyway, glory to God. <laughs> Deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made a father of a multitude of people. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. How many have ever been there? Well, listen, when they tell you there's no hope and they're telling you it's beyond hope and they're telling you that there's nothing for you that they can do, what do you got to lose but to win? Right. Right. <laughs> Just say, and get your faith stirred up and go, glory to God. I don't walk by what I see. I don't walk by what I feel. I walk by the word. And what I see around me and what I hear around me, that is subject to change. It is temporal, but I'm trusting the eternal word of God. And this has to change. 
Go, go back to verse 20, Cass. He said, what did he do? He staggered not at the promise of God. What was the promise? God said, you'll be the father of a multitude. You'll be a father of nations. It said he staggered not at the promise of God. Notice the word for stagger. I want you to see it, my dear friend. The word stagger means to withdraw from. It means to desert. In other words, the word there, you're standing on the word, you're in faith, you're trusting God. And, and it said that Abraham didn't withdraw from the promise. It, it, it means to separate oneself in a hostile spirit, to oppose, strive with dispute, contend, to be at variance, hesitate, doubt, be inconsistent. Sometimes we wonder, say, well, Pastor Michael, I don't understand why I'm not getting it. This is a big reason why a lot of people are, myself included. There's been times in my life, maybe, I, you know, you, you waver a little bit, you doubt a little bit, and, you know, then we go, well, we start going, God, I just wonder why. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't do it. Well, is it possible that you withdraw, you deserted, you backed away? And again, there's no condemnation here. I'm not trying to preach beat up on the unbeliever's day. <laughs> I'm just trying to encourage you. I'm just trying to encourage you, right? And, and, and my job is to, by the grace of God, is to exhort, to teach, right? And to, to, to help, right? And, uh, and I believe that the Lord is, 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 is helping us. And sometimes, sometimes the strong words, the words of change, those are, I love those words. Some people get upset. Oh, I don't want to be corrected. I love it when God corrects me. I love it. Because if I'm missing it in any way, I've done 360 about face and moved in another direction. Are you here, my church family? So I said, go back to the scripture, cast. He said he didn't stagger at the promise of God but it says, through unbelief. But it says, he was, what was he? He was strong. Strong. Everybody say strong. Strong. Str strong in what? Strong in faith. faith. Giving what? Glory God. Oh, we're going to start seeing here. How, how was he strong in faith? Why was he not? When you're weak in faith, you're considering the problem. When you're weak in faith, you're considering your body. You're considering the circumstance. But, but to be strong in faith and not stagger... This is the key right here. You're giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at the word strong. I want you to see it. Slide number 47. How many want to be stronger in the midst of your battle? The word strong, uh, slide 47, it means to be empowered. Now, there, there's, when you're in faith, when you're, and we're going to see it in a moment, when you praise God and you worship God, it gives you, you receive strength and you are strengthened in your faith. You increase in strength. You, you increase with your authority. You increase with your power. When you and I are praising and giving God the glory, when we're strong in faith, you're empowered. Your, strength, your faith is getting strengthened. When you and I are praising God and worshiping God in the midst of our storm, not only is our things happening out there in the spirit realm, there's things happening in you. Your faith is getting strengthened. You're being empowered. When you and I consider the problems, the circumstances, and we look at all the negative things, it weakens us. It brings us down. But go back to that scripture cast. But when you and I are worshiping and giving glory to God, we're getting empowered in our faith. Amen. Some people say, I don't understand why I'm so weak. Because you're not praising them. I don't understand why I'm having such a tough time. It's because you're focusing on the negative. <laughs> I feel like I'm being hard on you guys this morning. Because you're focusing on the wrong things. But if you'll just make up your mind to walk by faith and not by sight and start praising God. He said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. What was he doing? Giving, Giving what? Glory. glory to God. Notice the word for glory. I want you to see it, my dear friend. How many love the word? Isn't it great? Yeah. Woo, we're getting it today. He was strong in faith. Glory means, it's a Greek word, doxa, which means a good opinion, right? How many have a good opinion of God? Yeah. Concerning one, so we honor God, resulting, when you, when you look at God and you value God and you see his worth, the pastor talked about it, how awesome he is, right? The result is that we praise him and we worship him and we give him glory. So when it says he was strong in faith as he what? He was empowered by his faith. He was strengthened by, in his faith as he worshiped and praised God. As he was praising God and worshiping God, his faith Are you hearing me, church family? Yeah. Look at that scripture. I want you to see it in the, the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. 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 
The New Living Translation says, says this, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promises. In fact, his faith grew stronger in this, he brought glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, Cassie, put the Amplified. Amplified does the best job on this one. To me, I love the way the Amplified brings it up. It says, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubting, questioning, concerning the promises of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you guys hearing this? So as you and I are praising and worshiping God, yeah. not only are things happening in the valley, but things, God's strengthening us. Amen. If you're going through a storm and you're going through a problem, you're going through a situation and you're feeling down, and you're feeling weak, hey, you can change it right now. Begin to just lift up your eyes, focus on the word and begin to praise God. And as you do that, your faith You're empowered, and he grew strong. Can you get stronger in your faith? Can you get strong? Can you get more power? Can you be empowered more? Yes. How? By giving as, as he gave praise. Where's Josiah? Let's get up here, Josiah. Let's do uh, uh, all the angels around the throne. Praise him. Now, listen, if you're, if, you're, if you're here today and you've never, ever made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is your day, man. Just receive what he's done. Receive the great grace of God. He died on the cross for you, buried, resurrected, yes. imparts new life, right? Hallelujah. Say this prayer. Receive what God's done. Just receive what the Lord has done. If you've never done that, you know, getting saved is not, well, I go to church, I'll be a nice person. There's going to be a lot of nice people going to hell. Our, 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 our salvation is based on what Christ did for us, not on our good works, our efforts, right? Say this to me. Say, Father God, I receive what Jesus did for me 2,000 years ago. I believe in the death, burial, resurrection of my Lord. And I receive right now the life of God. I call on you. And your word says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.